Today I'm going to be talking about my rhinoplasty experience. I had a rhinoplasty in January of 2021, so I'm going to be talking about my consultations, prep for surgery, aftercare. I'm going to show some before and afters as well, so you can see my nose before surgery, but also so you can see how swelling progresses since the surgery and also any other changes that have happened since I had the surgery. To find my surgeon, I only went to two consultations actually. They were both free consultations so I don't have a strong opinion on whether having a free consultation is better or worse than someone who offers consultations for a fee. My first consultation was with um, a doctor who was also an ENT, not just a plastic surgeon. It was appealing to me because I knew the structural integrity of my nose was probably not at risk with this doctor. However, I also wasn't sure if I would get a dramatic enough result. So it's kind of a trade-off. I know it might sound vain to say I went with someone else because I thought they would make my nose better at the risk of maybe my breathing wouldn't be as good. If I'm putting myself through this whole experience and spending all this money for the point of having a nose that I like to look at better, I just want to make sure I can really maybe get my vision because I wasn't seeing in the morphs exactly what I was looking for. I think on my part I should have done more prep and had more questions ready to ask, but I did feel rushed and so that made it harder for me. So I ended up consulting with a different plastic surgeon who was strictly a plastic surgeon. They did the morphs and I liked those a lot better. In my consultation with that surgeon they also recommended that I get a genioplasty, which is basically just a chin enhancement. I opted not to do that because when they showed me the morphs I didn't like how it looked. Looking back I do wish I had done it but that's a whole <laughs> different issue. So at the time I declined and after consulting with those two surgeons I felt ready to make a choice. So I ended up choosing the second surgeon that I consulted with who is just a plastic surgeon because I thought he would give me more of the results I was looking for aesthetically. So I booked in with him. I am a college student so I scheduled my rhinoplasty for winter break so that I wouldn't have to miss school. They do tell you two weeks for recovery so I did take two weeks off from work but I wasn't having to go to school at that time anyway. In prep for the surgery, I did very minimal surgery prep. I saw all these lists online of like 20 things that you need to get and while I'm sure they help and I'm sure they can really you know, enhance your comfort in recovery. I just didn't find a lot of that necessary. I made it by a lot less things. So I'll tell you what I use and what I found useful. There's a lot more things that people recommend and suggest that you do, but I'll give you my bare essentials list. The first thing I would really recommend is a neck pillow. You can't sleep on your side because you don't want to hit your nose and for drainage reasons, you kind of need to sleep elevated also. So a neck pillow to kind of hold your neck in place and then I also used a lot of pillows beside me to kind of just keep me in like I don't know like in a little zone where I really wasn't moving or rolling around. So that's really important. So definitely a neck pillow plus other pillows to kind of keep you in one place. The next thing that was necessary for the most part was gauze. I think the surgeon gave me some gauze to go home with, but not a ton. So after surgery, they gave me this little thing that wrapped around my ears and had this little like almost like styrofoam piece that went right here. But in order to use that effectively in cash drainage, you had to wrap gauze around it. So I did go through a lot of gauze from that. So gauze definitely as well. You also end up needing Q-tips and hydrogen peroxide side to clean those stitches. I don't remember specifically what ointment I used, but some kind of bacitracin ointment. Obviously all of these things you should check with your own surgeon about, but most of the things I did were directions from my surgeon. One thing I would recommend for comfort purposes are facial cleansing wipes. Shortly after surgery you can't shower that easily and you definitely can't wash your face. So especially if you have oily skin, get some face wipes because you'll start to feel crusty. And also for me, I can't remember what it's called, but I think it's that yellow like disinfectant type stuff that they put on you. I think I still had some of that on my face. My mom said she thought it was bruising at first, but we realized it was just that. That. but it also got in my eyes and it really burned. So I would recommend face wipes maybe even to use right away and just throughout recovery when you can't wash your face really well. 
The last item I would say that's really helpful to have is some sort of dry mouth spray. After surgery, you cannot breathe through your nose at all whatsoever, only through your mouth. And when you say that, you're like, oh, okay, that's fine. You can only breathe through your mouth. It's not that bad. At least that's what I thought. Until it actually happened, I was like, oh, this isn't a huge deal. Then. Once I could only breathe through my mouth, it was like hell on earth. Okay, falling asleep with your mouth open is horrible. Obviously, eventually you get used to these things and you can't breathe out of your nose anyway. So there's not really an option for you, but your mouth gets so dry, so dry. That was one of the most uncomfortable parts was the freaking dry mouth. So dry mouth spray, really helpful. A lot of people recommend Arnica or bromelain, which I didn't take it all. I did get pretty swollen, but my bruising was minimal. I didn't have anything crazy like the big purple patches or anything. I didn't have any purple bruising. My bruising was just yellow. So I would say my bruising was minimal even without those things. I just didn't feel there was a need to. I was going to be laying at home anyway, so it didn't really make a difference to me. Also, after surgery, it's really hard to move your mouth because your lip is attached to your nose and you're not as aware of that until you have surgery on your nose. Eating is really difficult. You obviously need soft foods like applesauce, yogurt, things like that, that you don't have to chew much because chewing is not that fun after surgery. Finally, day of surgery came. I was like pretty nervous when I got into the surgical center. Is it called a surgical center? Surgery center? You know what I mean? When I got to where I was having the surgery, I was freaking out. Truly, I really was. I'm an anxious person in general, so maybe that has a lot to do with it. Obviously, most people are going to be nervous for surgery, but I was like, shit. <laughs> I was like, can I do this? Can I do this? And I was like, I'm here. I got to do it. I was panicking and I told them that. And I think, I don't know if they gave me something in my IV or what. Not too long after they started getting me ready to actually go in. I think that's the point. They gave me something in my IV. I started to calm down. While I was filming this yesterday, my memory card filled up. And it was also getting dark. So we're on filming day two. That's why my makeup and shirt's different. So stop. Picks are coming, so blood, swelling, stitches, warning. So for the surgery itself, they shaved down my hump and they also refined the tip. I also got a splint on top of my nose and stents inside. They also gave me a drip pad that wrapped around my ears and went under my nose with gauze on it to catch all of the drainage. I did have an open rhinoplasty, so they peeled the whole thing back. My only external stitches were here. I think they went up in my nostrils, but you couldn't see that from the outside. This was the only visibly stitched area. So when I first got out of surgery, I was super surprised because I could breathe perfectly clearly. And I think that's just because the stents are in there supporting the nasal cavity. It just hasn't had a chance to start swelling and oozing yet to block off your nose, but that happened pretty soon after and then I didn't breathe through my nose for a long time. I don't know how long it was. Probably till I got my stents out. So for aftercare, I kind of mentioned a lot of it in talking about prep. All of these things are going to be really dependent on what your surgeon recommends. The things that I did were based on guidance from my own surgeon for what it's worth. One of the most important things is laying kind of upright. You don't want to lay flat. Make sure you have pillows to support yourself. A neck pillow I mentioned. I also like the pillows beside me. I was pretty diligent about applying the bacitracin ointment, especially on this area externally because it helps prevent it from drying out and scarring. I think it was a few days after that I started cleaning my nose with hydrogen peroxide and q-tips. I was just scared about disrupting some of the scabs at first because I was still bleeding a lot, but at some point you will clean the dried blood. And I think I did that a few times a day once I started. In terms of bleeding early on, I was very scared because I thought I was bleeding a lot. I guess that's subjective. You will just have that drip pad that I mentioned that has gauze wrapped around it. You will have to change the gauze on it once it gets too wet to be comfortable or absorbent. 
So if day zero was the day of surgery, day three post-op is when I didn't need the drip pad anymore. I think there was still some fluid, but it wasn't enough to really be dripping out of my nose. It could just kind of be cleaned up when I was cleaning with a Q-tip. I didn't really have a ton of pain. When I was researching before my surgery, I heard a lot of people say, it's not painful, it's uncomfortable. And I didn't really believe that. That was one of my biggest fears about getting it done. Just the pain associated with surgery. I would come to the same conclusion. I did not find it super painful, more uncomfortable because of the breathing thing like I mentioned. I may have taken a couple of the prescription pain pills that they gave me the first day or two, but I don't think I did after that. By day three, I remember overnight it felt like my pain stopped and it, it wasn't even that severe before. I think I still had a little bit of like maybe a little bit of soreness and just heaviness. I wouldn't say pain really starting at day three. I don't know how common that is, but it was weird. It was like that. I'm grateful for that. As for my swelling and bruising, the bruising never got bad. I had some yellow bruising, but it was pretty minimal. I didn't have any purple or any dark bruises at all. I think they say the swelling peaks around 24 to 48 hours after surgery. The swelling was interesting. I definitely was really swollen here and really swollen here. Before I got my splint off, which I think is metal, but either way, it really prevents the swelling in this area by having, you know, a tight thing covering it. Since it can't swell there, I swelled up so much right in here for a little bit. I looked like a deer or the Navi from Avatar is what I always say that I looked like. I think I was swollen for a while. I was still pretty swollen at my first post-op appointment. All in all, swelling more so than bruising for me, but I think that's pretty dependent on the individual. I also didn't take any of the supplements that I mentioned for bruising, so I think I just kind of got lucky. Day nine post-op was when I went to my first post-op appointment. That's when they removed my splint and my stents. Neither of those things were particularly painful. I think there was adhesive here, so that was kind of a pulling feeling. And then for the stents, that's where they pull it like from your brain. That wasn't that bad either. It definitely did feel like a big relief. Mine stung the tiniest bit. The first one, not really, but the second nostril, I think I was kind of anticipating it more. So that one did sting, but it was fine. It was basically nothing. After that, I started to feel my nose a little more and it was super hard feeling and also numb. And the numbness went away. I'm not sure exactly how long that took. My nose feels normal now. It still kind of feels hard, but I think that's really just cartilage that I'm feeling. <laughs> I think I might have had more skin before. I don't know, that's probably dumb. After I got my splint off, they taped the bridge of my nose. Um, they glued some tape down with adhesive. I think at that point, you can get the tape wet. I still don't think you're supposed to get that tape soaked, but I think if water gets on it, it's not a huge deal at that point. And eventually the tape falls off on its own. That took me about a week. That put me about two weeks post off that my nose was out to the world without anything on it. Not long after I got my splint off and my nose was still taped. I did my debut of my nose to my friends. It was really funny because we were all just laughing because since they cut you here and sew you back there, it impacts your upper lip. It was just like so stiff. It was just stuck in like this position. So I'd be like, <laughs> my expressions looked hilarious and my friend was making fun of me, but it was pretty funny. That was about the time I went back to work as well. That was fine. I remember feeling like I wish I wasn't at work, but I was functional. My nose was kind of sore. I think I was still pretty swollen. I think I had just kind of felt full and heavy. We were also wearing masks because it was the pandemic. That also made my nose sore from just the weight of it on my nose. Two weeks is the recovery time they say. I wish I had a little bit more, but I was functional. I could work. It was okay. I worked at Ulta at the time, so it was mostly, mostly just running around the store. Nothing too strenuous, but even then, I wasn't loving it. I really liked my nose, even in the first month post-op when it's the most swollen. I thought it looked great. The only thing I was concerned about was that I had a little bit of hump left here. I read that if you have a dorsal hump shaved down, there can be more swelling there and it can make it appear like there's still a hump. I don't notice it at all anymore, but at the time I was a little nervous about that, but then I felt like it went away, so it was okay. Most of my swelling as expected went away in the first couple of months. They say a year for full results and I would say that's 
about on par with the changes I noticed. I have lots of pictures to show. Unfortunately, they're not all at the same angle or lighting. I still thought they might be helpful, but also it's just kind of fun. I hope sharing some of this will answer some questions. I know there's a lot of videos like this. For my surgery, I wanted to get every piece of information that I could. Closing remarks because I'm not good at filming on my camera. Overall, I definitely think the surgery was worth it for me. I was really unconfident before and I didn't like being in photos at all. I just feel a lot more comfortable being in pictures specifically, but also not worried if people are thinking about what my nose looks like. And that probably sounds dramatic, but when you have an insecurity, it's what you think about. My nose job cost about $9,000. I will say I do have some asymmetries with my nose, including here where it's not as rounded as the other side. So my side profile is different depending on the side you're viewing it on. Um, if I go totally to the side, I think it's normal. I don't know. But I do have some asymmetries on the tip of my nose here. And I do think my septum is crooked now. There's always a level of risk that you have to assess when you're doing something like this. There's always a chance you're going to be botched. And I don't know that it's realistic to expect perfection either, but you should expect improvement. And so I got the improvement that I needed to feel more confident in myself. Even with the things that I don't think are ideal about my nose, I... I'm so happy with it and happy with my choice to go through with it. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, the pictures. What the f is happening outside? Okay. A lot of people recommend Arnica or Bromelain sub sub Arnica or Bromelain. Um, I think they went up in my not. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> okay, I don't know what else to say. The clip to follow is just me going on a tangent about how horrifying it was in the moment for me to put myself on the operating table. In that moment, that was horrifying because it felt surreal, I guess. I don't know what they were supposed to do otherwise. Put me on a table and then wheel me in? I don't know. But I was scared. Also, my memory card became full in the middle of that tangent. So that was also funny. I think they wheeled me in a wheelchair or something back to the actual operating room. And I just remember entering the operating room and having to <laughs> get on the table. They were like, okay, lay down on the table. I was like, oh. I don't know why. Like, I, I was already kind of high or whatever was happening at that point. So I, <laughs> I just remember walking into the room being like, okay, this is like a TV show, but it's also kind of hazy because I'm on drugs that they gave me on my IV. And so they're like, okay, walk. And to me, it's just like this.